Fancy Lisa and I am the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and today I have a brand new Cricut 101 video for you. We are going to jump in and learn how to use our shape tool in Cricut Design Space to make all kinds of shapes and how to manipulate them together to create beautiful designs that you can craft with. Let's go. Okay, today we are going to talk about using the shape tool in Cricut Design Space. So I have opened up my Cricut Design Space, started a new project, and the shape tool is right over here. And you can see that when you click it, you have 10 basic shapes that you can make. So you have a square, and when you click on that, it automatically inserts that shape for you. Square and a circle. Let's just put all of the shapes out here. A triangle and a diamond. Then we can add the pentagon, the hexagon, the star, the octagon, and the heart. I'm actually gonna stick with those nine and we'll talk about the score line in another um, episode. So once you insert the shapes, um, these are really great basics that you can use in a lot of projects. Consider them almost like those nested dies that we all really love that you can use with your regular die cutting machines. Well, now you can create your own custom size pieces with your Cricut Explore, Cricut Maker, any of those, Cricut Joy, any of those. So um, the basics are the same as with text or with anything else. So when you click on the shape and it's selected, you have the X up here that will delete the shape. Right here is the rotating um, button. So if you click and hold, you can rotate that. I'm gonna undo that. Um, over here in the lower right hand corner is the resize button. So if you click it and hold and drag, then you can resize your shape to a custom size. And then in the bottom left is the lock button. This is an important one for shapes. So if you notice when you go to insert shapes, there is no rectangle shape. There is only a square. So here you have your square. It's staying a perfect square. If you want to resize it and you are looking for a rectangular shape, what you're going to want to do is click the unlock button right there. You can see it's unlocked now. And now I can drag and change the size and make it into a rectangular shape, which might have been what I was looking for for a project. The same is true for any of these shapes. So for instance, if you are looking for an oval, let's bring our circle over here, then you may want to unclick this and then you can drag it into the oval shape that you were looking for. So um, that's just a really good hint to be able to customize. And again, just like with the text, you can drag and reshape over here, but you can also come up here to your toolbar and say you know the exact width and height. Like I know that I wanted this to be six inches, and I know I wanted the width to be four inches because I'm going to use it. Oops. because I'm going to use it for a picture. And that way it is resized to a four by six oval right there and say I'm wanting to cut a photo four by six. Well, now I can lay the photo on my mat and it will cut just like that. Or I can cut this out of a piece of paper and use it to trace around a photo that I was wanting to cut by hand. Another way you may want to use your shapes is to make an outline. So you might not want a solid triangle. You might be looking for an outline of a triangle. So I'm going to fill this with white right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy and then I'm going to paste, edit copy, edit paste, a second triangle. So you can see my two triangles, they are identical. So now when I resize this one down ever so slightly, put it right here in the middle, you can see I have the outline of a triangle. However, this is not going to cut like this. When I go to make it, 
over here, you can see it has sorted out my two triangles. So that was not the desired effect. What you are going to want to do is to slice those two. But okay, truthfully, I think I'm just gonna move that down. Okay, so I have my outline. What I'm going to do is select these two shapes, just like that, they're both selected. And I'm gonna come down to my slice tool here in the corner, press slice. So now you can see I have three shapes left. So I have my first triangle, I have my, uh, sorry, I have an additional triangle, another triangle, and then I have my outline, which is what I was looking for in the first place. So if I wanted that, then I can just delete these extra two triangles and I'm left with my tool right here or my triangle outline. So when I click make it, you can see it is cutting that into the exact shape that I was wanting it to. Now, this is fun for a lot of reasons. You can make some very cool designs. So if I copy and paste this right here, maybe I'm wanting to create kind of an arrow effect and I can paste another one in like this. I could have them touching, move this over just a little bit. So now I have kind of my three triangles, which is very cool. Now I can, if I click make it right now, again, it's going to sort out those three triangles, which was not what I was wanting it to do. I want it to cut this as one full figure. So I will select all three. And in this case, I'm going to click weld and put them together. And now they are one big, piece, which is a lot of fun to start to play with and see what kind of neat designs you can make. You can also combine different shapes together. So if I was working with this star, I'm going to fill it with white and then I'm going to combine a heart within my stars. So I can bring it in like this and say I wanted the heart to be purple so maybe i'm making a banner and there was a heart within the banner i have two options here so i'm going to put them together and then the first thing i'm going to do is group them there's a button right over here under layers so i can group those so now when i resize they will be resized together which works great i also can decide to slice so when I slice, now I have my purple heart, I have my star with the heart cut out, and then I have a white heart. And this can work really well in a couple of ways. So what I can do is if I was going to make that banner, of course I can just paste the purple heart on top of a white star to print out my banner, but I can also take this and say I want this one to be five inches wide. Now I can resize it and this could hang in the middle, which would be a very cool effect. I can also resize this to larger, and maybe make sure it still fits back there. I'm gonna arrange and send that backward Let's just go ahead and send it to the back. So now it will be behind. So you get that kind of shadowed effect, which is another fun effect when you are playing with just layering pieces together. So I still have my separate banner here or my separate star, but I will be able to easily layer that purple behind it, which makes for a fun um, kind of cool effect. And while we're talking about it, let's just talk about paper piecing. So I have my two hexagons right here and say that I'm wanting to create kind of a honeycomb pattern. So I'm going to fill this with white just because it's easier for me to see. I'm going to also do this one white. And then I'm going to just bring this one down like so. Oops, let's bring it to the front. So now it'll be like this. 
Okay, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so I have a thicker outline to work with. Okay, so this is the honeycomb shape that I'm going to work with. Let me see if I can arrange these and align these there by the center. So now they're perfectly shaped. I'm going to put them together just like this. I will press slice. And so now I have my extra pieces right here. I'm going to keep them because I'm going to work right here. So I want to make a honeycomb pattern. So I'm going to copy and paste, bring this together right here, copy, paste, bring that together right there, copy, paste, just like we did before. And we'll just do it nice and simple, copy and Okay, so let's just stick with this for right now. Okay, so I have all of those together. Again, if I press make it, they are not yet welded together. So that's not going, that's just going to cut out five individual pieces. So let's weld those together and you can see how that worked. I can also undo that. And if I wanted them to overlap even more like this and like this, moving it all just a little bit closer together. All right, now we have our honeycomb shape really nicely done, but I want to fill those in. So that's why it's great that I have these other hexagons ready to go. So now all I'm going to do is just up the size ever so slightly, and I will be able to fill these in so I can put this one right here and then I can copy and paste and I say I want to do, I'm doing a rainbow kind of feel. So I'll make this one into yellow and I'm going to send it to the back so I can see what it'll look like. I'm going to paste again. This one will be orange. I'm going to send it to the back. And you can see how this can make paper piecing really easy. Sometimes it's kind of tricky because you're, you know, trying to guesstimate how, um, big something is supposed to be and so this will make it a lot easier to kind of piece those together. Let's turn this one green and send it to the back and then we'll paste one more in that will be blue and then send it to the back. So now I have all my pieces ready to go. So if I were to Let's just delete some of these other shapes that we're not using. Now I want to cut out, cut this out. So when I go to make it, it has already sorted it into the different mats for me. So I have my white outline and then my colors over here. Now, as a reminder, the Cricut is not going to print for you. So it's not printing these colors. These colors are representing different colors of paper, different cardstock that I am cutting on. So um, it doesn't really matter which colors you choose for these individual shapes. They are representative of what you are going to cut on in real life. Let's cut out this design and I'll show you how it works. is my final product um, all pieced together all my different hex cons and this very cute little honeycomb shape I'll be able to use this in an upcoming craft project as you can see working with shapes and Cricut Design Access is super easy and it really opens up a lot of doors to create your own custom design pieces that you can use in all kinds of projects you might be working on if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. I made sure to link down below where you can pick up a Cricut Explore Air 2 of your own. It will come in super handy in your craft room. I am loving mine these days. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.